welcome, welcome. If this is your first time here, my name is Shadeva Roberts. Please go ahead and hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with what's happening here on this channel. And if you already subscribed, thank you so much for tuning in today. I just came to bring you a word this week and just to remind you, just, just don't rush. Don't rush. You don't have to rush in this life. You're going to get to wherever God wants you to be at just the right time. You know, in my life, personally, I used to always... I used to try to rush. I want to rush to get to this place, rush to get to that place, rush to get to this level and to that level and all these kind of things. And that was my anxiousness, you know, for I guess not seeing the fruit that I wanted to see in life. Or maybe sometimes it was other people's voices saying, hey, you should be this, you should be doing this, you should be doing that, I have this, I have that, you know, all those types of things. And so I would kind of like be anxious and, and, and driven, you know, by those things. You know, and it was times in life where God had to come to me and say, why are you in such a hurry? What are you racing to? What are you racing, you know, towards? God's perfect plan, his perfect plan and purpose for my life and for yours is going to happen at just the right time. It's going to happen at the appointed time that he has for it to happen. So have no fear. Don't worry. Don't doubt. Don't rush. Just trust God. He's going to lead you. It doesn't matter how you feel or what you think right now. If you think you're off course, you think this or think that, he's going to get you there at just the right time. I'm going to show you in the word of God what his word declares over purpose, over time, over seasons. And we'll get a better understanding of what God is saying about, hey, there's no need for you to rush. I'm God. I'm in control. When you're in control, you rush. You'll walk in peace. You'll walk in rest if you let God move. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we bless you and praise you. We thank you for your faithfulness, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, you planned the end before the beginning. Hallelujah, Lord God, you're faithful, you're kind, you're worthy, Lord God. You you, you had every day planned before a single day had passed. You know us, you formed us in our mother's womb. You've seen us, God. Hallelujah, before we even kept coming to the form of flesh, Lord God. You knew us, you had a plan for us, God. And your plan, your will is perfect. And everything in our lives is going to happen at just the right time. So we don't have to rush. We don't have to race. We just need to walk in step with you and trust in you and know that we're going to get there at just the right time. Hallelujah. So anoint us for patience today, Lord. In the name of Jesus, I decrease, Lord God, that you might increase, Lord God. Flow through me. Speak the words you have to speak to, to, to all of us, God, today in the name of Jesus. I praise you. And I worship you and thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So as I said, you know, um, when you rush in this life, typically there's this picture. There's something that you're going after. There's this thing about yourself that you feel like you need to see happen right now. There's this thing about your bank account and you feel like you got to have this amount of money in there right now. And if you don't have it right now, something is wrong. Why? Because everybody else got it. So I need to have it. You know, there's this particular car you need to be driving right now. This house you need to live in and you need to live in that house right now. And God is saying, I need you to throw all of that out. Throw it out. Because if you do it, if you toil and you wrestle to try to rush and race to get there, you're going to get your results. You're going to be tired. You know, the blessing of the Lord make it rich and it adds no sorrow. So you're racing and you're rushing trying to get to a particular place. And God is saying, but if you do it in my time, I'm going to make it sweet. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bless it so you can actually enjoy the thing that you're not owned by it. That you haven't stressed yourself out so much and lost so much trying to get to where you're going in a hurry. When you could just get on pace with me, you could just walk with me and we'll get there at just the right time. But you got to be patient. You got to trust in God. The idea here is, is, that, is that we stay submitted to God, trust in him, follow his ways and be led by his spirit. Hallelujah. Let's go into the word. Ecclesiastes chapter three, verse one. King James Version says, to everything, there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. Hallelujah. To everything, there is a season, everything. There's nothing that he leaves out. You know, we tend to think that our minds are bigger than God's, that we know more than he knows, that we knows when we need something and why we need it. And he knows the, the motives of our hearts. He knows what's driving us. He knows what's causing us to rush. He knows what keeps us unsettled. Hallelujah. And he knows that some things, if we get them ahead of time or we get to a particular place ahead of time in our lives, we won't be able to be sustained in that place 
And so he wants to do it in his perfect way, in his perfect time, and in the perfect season that he has. Hallelujah. In the time for every purpose in your life that he has already established under heaven. So his word declares that we got to stand on these scriptures. There's a time, there's a purpose, there's a season. Don't lose hope. Don't lose faith. Don't get into your own strength and try to make it happen. Try to produce it in your own strength. Allow for God to do it. As I said, though, the key is walking with him, being in step with him, hearing from him. And then you get there in the time and the appointed season that he has for it. Otherwise, you'll wrestle and you'll toil and you'll try to get ahead in life. And God is saying, I just want you to be on time. Why do you feel like you need to be ahead? Just trust me. Every step is going to have, you know, what it needs when it needs it, its own significance or what have you. But just at the right time that I plan for it. So trust in me. Walk with me. Just keep putting one foot in front of the other. Keep coming to me. Stand submitted to me. Trusting in me. Yeah, it may seem like it's, you know, God, you ain't doing it fast enough. Just, just keep trusting him. Keep following his lead. Hallelujah. And it doesn't matter, you know, like I said, what it looks like to me, doesn't matter what it looks like to you or anybody else, what anybody says about you, what they think about you or where you are. If you are following God, he's going to get you there at the right time. His word declares so. He's his word. He's not a man. He, he can't he can't repent. Hallelujah. So we got to trust in him. First Peter 5, 6 King James Version says, humble yourselves, therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. So the first step is we got to humble ourselves. We got to let go of all, you know, uh, pride. Uh, we feel like we can do it. We can do it better. We can do it quicker. We can do it faster. We know what we want, what we need more so than God does. He's saying, humble yourself under my mighty hand. That's the first step. Humble yourself. Take that pride down a, a few notches, but get rid of it all together. <laughs> Hallelujah. The only type of pride God wants us to walk in is a stately pride, like majesty. Hallelujah. We are our children of a king. Hallelujah. He wants us to be confident in him. God confidence, not conf self-confident. If you're trusting in you, you're going to get your results, as I said, but we got to trust in him. Humble ourselves with the word of God says under his mighty hand his mighty hand means that he's all powerful he can do it he can do all things money is nothing to him doesn't matter about the little car or whatever it is not say little not to be demeaning but i'm saying to god these things are small but these are things that we are just so bent on getting to in such a hurry we got you know even if it's marriage if it's a relationship or having children whatever it is the time and the season that god wants you to produce that's when you produce the time and the season that God has for you to drive that vehicle or move in that house or start that business or, 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 or whatever it is, plant the foundation, whatever it is God has for you to do, it's going to happen at that particular time if you allow for him to lead you into it. But when you try to do it, you'll get to a particular place where you have to toil and stress, where you have to be frustrated because these are the work of your hands and not the work of God's hands. And so he says, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. I got it. I'm in control that he may exalt you in due time. He may exalt you in due time. What does the word exalt mean? Hallelujah. In the Greek, it means the word is hoopsos, hoopsos, elevation, altitude, dignity, the sky in high. That's what that word means. So if you're feeling low, God is saying at just the right time, I'm going to lift you up high. I'm going to raise you up out of this place. Not to say he wants you to be in a sunken place or he wants you to be down or depressed. But what he's saying is, I'll bring you out. I'll exalt you. I'll give you your dignity back. Some of you are fighting with what somebody said about you. They said you couldn't do it. They said you weren't going to make it. They said you should have been doing this already. You should have already had that. You know, you don't have enough of this or you need more of that. And in your mind, you don't realize it, but that's the wheels that keep you turning. It's not motivated by God. It's motivated by the competition. You're competing with what the voices have said. And God is saying that, that that's an open door. That's access for the enemy. So you allow for those voices to speak to you. And now you're operating off of those voices instead of his voice. And he wants you to come back to the place where you're operating for what he has said. He'll give you the pace for the journey. It shouldn't be what somebody else says. And I get it that sometimes those things can drive us. 
But what does that do? It causes you to make inner vows. And when you make an inner vow, you're unteachable in the area and God can't get in. I got to do this. And I'm, I'm going to be the best at this. I'm going to listen. I'm going to that. I get that. And people do that a whole lot. And sometimes we see that and we feel like, man, you know, I, I need that type of strength in my life that, you know, I'm, I'm going to defy all the odds. Everything everybody said about me, that's what pushes me to. But what about God saying, if that's the thing that drives you, that, that could be the very thing that'll kill you because you may not ever be able to turn it off. And you'll be striving in seasons to get to a place, to get to a thing that God isn't even calling you to get to or to do. But if that's the thing that's driving you, what somebody said, what they said you should have been, what you shouldn't have been, how you shouldn't have been, and all those things, we all need motivation. But we need to let the Holy Spirit be our spiritual coach. We need to let God be the cheer, you know, the cheerleader, the one in our corner saying, keep going, keep going, keep going. Because when he does it, he'll get you to the point where he says, okay, break and let me work. I need you to calm down and sit down and rest. Let me produce this in your life. Let me get you to the promotion. Let me show you what, what you need to do. Because the thing about God is, as we go along in life and on this journey, he'll, he'll add things to us. You may need more wisdom for the next season of your life. You may need more grace. You may need more humility. Hallelujah. The Lord may say you even need to be more confident, more bold in this next season. And he wants to add that to you as you're going along on the journey. But if you're racing ahead of him, you're going to step into that next season. And when you get there, you done travailed, you done got here, but you are physically lacking, mentally, emotionally lacking everything that he wanted to impart to you before you got there. You bypassed all of that, doing it your way. But God is saying, I need you to come on, come back around, come back around and let me put you on my path. It's a straight path. Hallelujah. And so we got to follow him. He, he's going to elevate you in due season, in due season, the finances, the health, the wealth, whatever it is, in due season. Hallelujah. Remain humble. Just remain humble. At the right time, he's going to exalt you. He's going to give you your dignity back. He's going to cause you to walk in levels of confidence that you never even knew you could. He's going to raise you up so much in that confidence, that boldness that you get from him. Nobody can take that away from you. Hallelujah. You may get a, a, a false sense of that confidence, like I said, in the form of pride and you exalt yourself and you feel like I'm the man, I'm the woman. I got this. And God is like, no, I need you to redirect that. Your confidence and your, your boldness needs to come from me. Your tenacity needs to come from my spirit, not from the world, not from the way of culture, not the way other people do it. Get it from me. He says, let me be in control of it. Take your pride. Take your anger out of it. You mad at the world, mad at everybody. What mama and them said, what the teacher said, you couldn't do all these kind of things. And it's driving you, the people, what they said is driving you. And God wants you to lay that down. Hallelujah. You've made it an idol in your life. But he wants to, he wants to lead you by his spirit and grace. Hallelujah. He wants to lead you in confidence and boldness and dignity on in stately pride and confidence. Hallelujah. He wants to bless you. So when he adds to your life, you won't crumble. You'll crumble if you do it yourself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So God says, just be patient with him. Don't give up on him. Trust in him. He's patient with you. Hallelujah. He'll lead you back. He'll get you back on the right path. Just trust in him. Uh, 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8 through 9, New International Version says, But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promises. Some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you. Not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. As I said, you got to be patient. As God has been patient with you, we got to practice patience. Patience, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentle. The fruit of the spirit, patience, 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 patience. It's a fruit of the spirit of God. When you're racing, you're under pressure, you stress. It ain't God. I don't care how it looks. We think busyness is God. We gotta be booked and busy. We gotta be over here, over there. We gotta be doing all this stuff. And God is saying, no, nope, patience. Patience, you, you'll miss me if you're not patient. If you move by your own strength, you're gonna miss what I'm trying to say. Hallelujah. So don't get ahead of me. Don't walk behind me. Just stay in step. 
Hallelujah. He doesn't see things the way we see him. He doesn't think of things the way that we do as we see one day to him. Hallelujah. <laughs> one day uh, it, it's, it's like a thousand years. He's outside of time. We're the ones on the time frame. And God knows that. But who says you got to have it before you turn 40? Who says you got to have it before you turn 30? Who says you got to have it before you turn 60? This is the age. Mom and them finished doing what they was doing. So I got to be done at this age. Or, or who said, you know, I got to have such and such amount of money in the bank by such and such age. I know that the world and principles and strategies and different things like that give you these guidelines. And they say, you're going to be better off in this world, in this economy, in this world system. If you have such and such amount of money in the bank, if you have so many investments and all these different things, and I'm all for all of that. Hear this, please hear this correctly. What I'm talking about is the striving that we can do in life, the things that we entangle ourselves in, the so-called opportunities we run so hard after and chase after. And God is saying, but did I lead you to that? It's the, it's the rushing that we do the racing that we do. And God is saying, I want you to calm yourself. There's more for you. I don't want you sick and overwhelmed when you get there. I don't want you having ulcers in your stomach and stressed out because you can just run and run and run and run. Now you can't breathe and your stomach always hurt. You always got issues and stuff like that going on in your life. And God is saying, I want you to just, just be, just bask in my presence, just walk in my peace, just walk in my liberty, walk in my freedom, walk in my grace. Hallelujah. And I'm going to say it again. The blessings of the Lord make it rich and they add no sorrow. Hallelujah. So once you get to that place, he wants to wants you to enjoy that place. The Lord knows the desires of our hearts. He knows that some of us, you know, we, we you know, will be on jobs for years and years and years and years and years and be on that job. Hate the job. You know, <laughs> you can do something real well, but you just hate the job. And I've been there in life. I've worked some jobs and I'm like, OK, this is so easy for me. It just it just it's naturally you know, easy for me. I can do this all day long, but I don't like doing this annoys me. <laughs> Come here every day around these people that get on my nerve. You know, all that God sees that. And he wants to position you. I believe God loves us so much. He cares so much about us. He wants us to, to position us in things that make us thrive every day. He wants us to be in purpose. Hallelujah. We want to be in purpose and he wants us to be in purpose as well. He wants to bless us to get to those places, but he wants us to do it in a way that he has called for us to do it. So we don't have to be anxious for this or anxious for that. God is saying, you know, it it, it ain't it, it hasn't really been that long. It's not that long to him. Because in the grand scheme of things, he's looking at your life, you know, his ways are higher than our ways. He's looking at your life from up there. He sees the whole picture. <laughs> the whole picture. So we feel like we gotta get there. We gotta do this. We gotta have this by this age and that time and all this kind of stuff. And God is saying, but that what if I wanna do it different with you? His plan for you may not be, you know, for the same or identical to someone else's, you know. So he wants to line things up and do them in his way, in his timing. So it doesn't matter uh, uh, what it is or how it is, you know. Um, it doesn't matter your age either. It doesn't matter your age. You could be 45. You could be 55. You know, you've been believing the Lord for a spouse. He can send them to you at 65. Who knows? As long as you're still leaving, living this breath in your body, God says, I'll still do it. Maybe it was just needed for that particular time and season. Maybe right now he just wants to use you to be a blessing to, you know, others. He wants you to teach others about singleness and living before the Lord. Whatever it is, we just have to stay submitted to God and just trust him that he's going to bring you. Whenever the time, the due season is for you to have children, if that's what God, you know, has intended for your life, you're going to have them. Just stay in faith, continue to walk with him, continue to trust in him. Don't try to rush and panic and be, you know, uh, frantic about it and stress. And I know these are hard. Oh, my gosh, I know these are hard things. I know that these are hard things. And when you waited a long time, you know, you just feel like, Lord, OK, you know, you just ain't going to do it. But God is saying he doesn't see the way that we see. He's outside of time. And 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 we just know from stories in the Bible it doesn't matter if everything in your body is functioning like you think it's supposed to function. God can pull a miracle out of you. Hallelujah. He can do it. And he will do it. In the time and the season, he has planned it for you. Just stay with him. It doesn't matter what anybody else has said. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what they think. God is going to exalt you at just the right time. 
Hallelujah. He is going to lift you up. It doesn't matter that people spit on you or, or, or not literally, but you understand what I'm saying. They spoke down on you. You know, they were negative towards you. They thought less of you. They handled you wrong. God said, don't worry about it. I'm going to exalt you in due time, in the right season. And when I do it, you won't look your nose down at them. You won't because I'm going to take all of that out of you in the process. I'm going to set you up in a, in a really good place and you're going to be humble in that place. You won't be looking back saying, oh, I told you so. Mm -mm. But he's going to take all of that out because he's going to build character in you for the next place that he takes you to in this life. Hallelujah. Here's some, some confident scriptures for us. Some, some uh, scriptures that we can just hold on so that we can just trust in the Lord whenever we're questioning all of it. Isaiah 46, 11, uh, New International Version. It says, from the east, I summon a bird of prey. From a far off land, a man to fulfill my purpose. What I have said, that I will bring about. Hallelujah. What I have planned, that I will do. Hallelujah. Numbers chapter 23, verse 19, New King James Version says, God is not a man that he should lie, nor son of man that he should repent. He's not either. Has he said and will he not do? Or has he spoken and will he not make it good? Hallelujah. That's who he is. He's not frail and fickle like us. He's not going to shift. He's not. His mind doesn't change. If he spoke something to you just as he spoke it to you, that's what you're going to see. Hallelujah. Whatever his word says, that's what he means. You know, I even just think in my own life and how God has spoken something to me and I'll go look at it like, okay, Lord, I heard you when you said this, this, and this. And then something similar to that will happen. I'll be like, okay, well, maybe, maybe he just showed me this as like a symbol or something. Maybe he didn't really mean like that thing. <laughs> and then the Lord would just help me to zip my mouth up as he brought to pass the exact same thing he said in the exact same way he said it. So he's like, don't question me. If I tell you something, if I say I'm going to do something, I am going to do it. It may not happen the exact same way you thought it was going to happen or how you saw it. But if I spoke it to you, it's going to come to pass. I don't lie. I'm not a man that I should lie. When I speak something to you, I'm going to make good on it. When I tell you I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. Hallelujah. He'll call someone from a far off land. Hallelujah. To fulfill his purpose. He'll summon a bird. Hallelujah. To fulfill his plan. What he said, he will bring it about what he planned he will do it we gotta trust in him hallelujah we gotta trust in him so it doesn't matter what's happening right now in your life though it tarry though it tarry the thing that you hope for the thing you believe for the thing you've been praying about you've been travailing for it god is saying it's, it, it it may linger it feels like it's lingering you just like oh 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 i thought i was there i was almost there and god is saying but just hold on if you just hold on, I'm going to get you de there at just the right season. It's going to be better than you even could have imagined. Just hold on to me. Hallelujah. Trust in me. Walk with me. Stay with me. Hallelujah. It's not about what you think or what they said or what, how you feel. Hallelujah. Whatever he promised to you, that's the thing that's going to come to pass. Hold on to the promises in the word of God. Get close enough to God to where you can hear him speak a direct word to you for your life. Stay with him. Stick with him. Lean your ears into him. Sit quiet before him. Humble yourself before him so you can hear from him. He can begin to speak to you. And when God speaks a word to you, there's just the confidence that comes over you. You know you heard it from him. So it doesn't matter what other mouth rises up against that word. It doesn't matter if you think, I got to rush to get here, a rush to get there. God is saying, you can just slow on down and just remember what I said. That the, the word will keep you. His words to you will keep you. And it'll be just at the right time and in the right season. Be still. Don't fear. Just trust him. Just trust him. Just wait on him. Wait on his timing. Hallelujah. Even if you feel like you're out of sync right now, you feel like you've gone astray. You got to remember that God is leading you. He's leading you. And the moment that he's not leading you, he knows how to get you back on course. He's God above anything you can do or not do on this earth. He is God. He'll throw something in your path 
to cause you to turn around and go back in the direction he wants you to go. He'll send the donkey to stop in the middle of the road and speak to you. <laughs> you got to read the word of God. He says it doesn't matter. You try to go your way. Go, try to deter. Try to go wherever you think you can go. I have a plan for you. and He's going to bring you right back around to it. I've had seasons in my life where I felt like I was so far off. Like, you know, okay, I'm, I'm just like way out here. But it's in those times, you know, when I think back, that God saw me. Hallelujah. He never took his eyes off of me because he has a plan for my life. It doesn't matter how far away I thought I was or how far straight I, I, I thought I had gone. He's like, no, I'm going to pull you out of all of this stuff. And then once he pulls you out of all the stuff, he pulls all the stuff out of you. Glory to your name, God. Hallelujah. So he will bless you and raise you up. You don't need to worry about what anybody has said. I've had people tell me all kinds of things. You should have been doing this. You should be doing that. You should be farther along. You should be over here. You should be over there. And all along, God was just like, they, they don't know who I am. I'm God. That's my child. I'm in control. It doesn't matter what she's doing or what she did, what she did, or if she thought she was in control for a season of her life. I'm in control. Hallelujah! The best thing we can do is learn from what what we you know when we messed up in life. Learn from the mistakes that we made in life. Learn from them. And when God sets you on His path, He puts you on the straight and narrow. He puts you on a on a course that He has for you, the plan He has for you. You just stay with Him. You trust in Him. Continue to be led by Him. And he'll add every single thing to your life that he had already planned from the beginning. So if you're in a season and you feel like you don't have this or you don't have that, maybe it's not the time and the season for it. Maybe it's just your life isn't prime for that thing just yet. Maybe God is saying, in order for you to be the wife I want you to be, I'm going to work on your heart right now. I'm going to work on your life. I'm, if you, I, you can't be the husband that, you know, uh, exemplifies me to your wife or to your family until I work some of these things out in your life. I'm going to get you to that place. She's going to come. He's going to come. And when it comes, I want it to be right. Not perfect. We got this notion that it's all going to be perfect. No, you don't meet perfect people. None of us are perfect. We get together and God even does works in us. As we get together, as we're married, you marry somebody, you're going to have issues. Everybody's going to have issues. Hallelujah. And God uses even that. So we just feel like you got to, you know, every little thing has to be perfect. And God is like, no, you need to throw that out. That's not how this works. Hallelujah. God specializes in dealing with, with special people. I say special in terms of we be messed up, if you understand what I'm saying. We be having stuff going on. But God chooses to use us. He chooses the foolish things to, co to confound the wise. Hallelujah. Because he's God. And he can do that. So don't rush in this life. Calm down in this life. Sit before your father. Hallelujah. You can, you, you can spend so much time in his presence and such a confidence will come over you. So you just like, I don't even care anymore what happens or doesn't happen. Because I know God is in control. I know he's speaking to me. And as long as I'm in this place with him, this is the sweet spot. And so anything that comes or goes, I'm just trusting in his will. Whatever I have or don't have, I'm just trusting in his will. And I've had to settle that in myself so many times over the course of my life. But I thank God that the things that I waited on, the things that I prayed for, the things that I was travailing for, trying to rush into and do all of this. When I did it in my own strength, I was tired. When I did it in my own strength, I was weary and I was frustrated. I got frustrated with myself. I was getting frustrated with people and all kinds of other stuff. But when God did it, he just made it new. He just made it good. It was just awesome. And he even asked stuff on there that you don't even think you need. But he knows you and he loves you. And he desires to bless you. He desires to bless all of us. He just wants to do things in, in his timing and in his season. And as the word is declared, as I've shared this word with you, there is a time, and there is a season to everything under heaven. Get in position and get in line with that word. Let that word undergird, undergird your life. Stay in position. Stay in his presence. Keep hearing from him. You can't go wrong if you get in that place. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. God is faithful. He is faithful. He is awesome. Just line up with him and let him lead you. Don't rush. Don't rush. Don't rush. Don't rush. But just trust in him. You're going to get there at just the right time in his timing. Just continue to be led by him. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, we bless you and praise you, Lord. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for this word, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that we can begin to see things, Lord, here on the earth. And, and, and we can just be so moved by circumstances and moved by social media and culture and what people think and what mama and them said and what this person said, what our pastor said and our friends said and what they have and what they don't have and what this group of people said, God. But we got to trust in you. Well, hallelujah we got to know what you're saying about our lives we got to know what you're saying about where we should be in the season the only way we're going to know the season we're in is if we get connected to you lord is if we get in your presence lord and allow for you to speak and say hey i am pleased with where you are right now just stay here and let me continue to work on you let me continue to work in you hallelujah so i just pray for every person under the sound of my voice that we can get in a position that we make our priority the presence of God, that we make our priority just be with you, just supplication, just petitioning you, just coming to you, God, asking, inquiring of you. You desire to lead our lives. Hallelujah. It's amazing that we are children of God, yet we just don't want to hear your voice sometimes. That the farthest thing we'll do is is, is, is stay in your presence. We, we need to stay in your presence, Lord God. So that you can speak to us, you'll minister to us, you'll love on us, you'll help us, you'll order our footsteps, you'll let us know when it's go time, when it's rest time. Hallelujah. When it's when it's time to fly, when it's time to soar, when it's time to run, when it's time to, to walk, and even when it's just time to stand, God. But we got to stay in your presence and hear from you. So, Father, I just pray your blessings over this word. I pray your blessings over your people. You minister to their hearts and minds, their souls and their spirits. Hallelujah. And I pray that this word just draws them all the more closer to you. That they would get out of the rush and the race of this life and just surrender all and just rest in your presence, God. Because you are going to make good on your word. And every single word you've spoken over them, you're going to bring it to pass. Whatever your purpose, will, and plan for them is, it's going to come to pass in your time and in the due season that you have for them. Hallelujah. I bless you and praise you. We thank you, Father, for your faithfulness, Lord. Thank you for your grace and your mercy. Thank you for seasons and just thank you that you know them all. We can trust in you. We can abide in you and rest in you. And it's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So stay with God. Stay with him. He's going to take you places that you never could have imagined. But just stay with him and just trust in him. He'll open up your eyes in each season of your life and let you know hallelujah that you're in this place or that place where he wants you to move to stay to stand to go whatever but just stay with him just trust in him doesn't matter if you feel like you stray doesn't matter if you, feel, if you feel like you're all just get back in line go back to him trust in him hear from him be led by him and he's going to get you there at just the right time don't rush hallelujah be blessed be encouraged with this word and i'll catch you guys in the next video bye